recently I've been getting into character animation and um, I'm making a little video here on how to use the Simplicage add-on. There's a lot of stuff I had to figure out for myself and I feel like uh, because the website claims it's not not for beginners, I feel like this could be for beginners if it just had a few <laughs> few instructions beforehand. It's, it's pretty simple to figure out to be honest. It's just a cloth body sim. Um, technically, it's soft body. That's what soft bodies are. Cloth simulation is a soft body, uh, and it just adds some physics to your character, and then adds a mesh that wraps around it, and then the cloth is pinned to the mesh that matches the shape. So if you want to make your one your own, like you want to make a custom one without using the saddle, on, you would just oh, hold on. The fuck the oh that's the. Uh, Never mind. I got a little scared. That's the um, the zoom hotkey. So, if you want to make your own, you would select something like this. That would work. And then you would uh, duplicate that, separate it, create a cloth sim, and then pin it to that new object, which would be this guy. It's pretty much all it does. Um, it puts some modifiers like smoothing and stuff on, but you could do really you could do all of this manually. You don't need this add-on. Um, but it does speed up the creation of these, so I recommend using it, and I like it a lot. So, <laughs> so if you want to make your own, do it that way. If you're going to use this, use this. Um, here's how you set it up. You come up here, you select your mesh, so you would, you would use the eyedropper and just pick the character. And then you pick a bone, so I'm choosing the R pectoral. Now you could choose vertex groups. If you want to do a bone, uh, It'll be less accurate, but that's more for like things like, say, if you want to do, um, uh, you know, like, like a hot dog or something like that. I, I can't tell you what I would use it for because that's NSFW, but you know, obviously, you'll figure it out. So a chain. So if you want to do a couple of these, like maybe a floppy arm or something like that, and then uh, vertex is for vertex groups. It's good for breast physics and stuff like that. So I'm going to choose the vertex. And then I'm going to choose the defaults. I, I tick all these on pretty much, except this one here. Uh, convex holes, if you want to do something like the hip joint, something that wraps around the entire character. But if it doesn't wrap the whole character, like just the front or just the back or just the fingers, you want to use uh, fill hole. And then you want to come down here and then hit create cage. And then just choose the other one. I'm going to do both of these and then hit create cage. There you go. You hit spacebar and play and you see they're working. So, what do you do if you have clothing on your character? Well, let me show you how to fix that. So I'm going to go here. Um, I'm going to choose an outfit real quick. Let me select this. This looks cool. I'm going to hit save. Um, and then I'm going to rename this character something else. I'm going to call her import. And control shift S. This is how I import stuff to Blender if I already got a character in my scene. Just so I don't have the character renamed to 002 or 003 or whatever the fuck. I'll just do it like this. So let's call it import and then cut out dress. And then I hit save as and I name it import and then I export that. So that way when I come in here I could just hide all and then import that. It's that easy. Double click it. And then I can go in here and delete the skeletons, which I don't need. Select this, go in here, select the armature, there we go. There's an issue when you, you play the animation, you're going to see that it goes right through the clothing. This makes no sense. If I were to select my character rig here, let me do real quick, throw on quick armature, I mean not armature, a, she has an armature, I need to give her a rig real quick. This won't take but a few seconds. There we go. So if I come in here and I start keying some things, let me... Grab the hips, do location. Oh, I bet I hit hide on it. I don't know why I did that. Oh yeah, I'm not used to Blender's animation tools. Let's say six, and then let's hit I. Location, I'm not gonna use auto keying because I, I do want this to be smooth enough that we can see what's going on, not just jerk, jittering around for no reason. Say back a bit, I location, and back, I uh, 
location. And then 31, I can then say RG. I hit it I. Location, and then if you just want to make it loop, you just select your last one, Control C, go to the end, Control V. There you go. Now, when you play it, back to the beginning, she's moving around first. So I'm just going to end this at frame 41. Come down to my simple cage. Set the range to 41. You can also do this in here. Uh, it's not just a simple cage. Uh, this is a default setting in Blender. You go into your physics. So if I select one of these guys, you would go down to cache and set your cache. That's where it sets it. So it's got a driver that puts it there, I guess. I don't know. And disk cache, if you don't have enough RAM, you can do that. So when I hit play, you can see that they just go right through the clothing. See how they just pop through? So if you want to fix that, you can do it two different ways. But I'm just going to show you the easiest method. If you're using Diffeomorphic, um, this will work on both DAS characters and non-DAS characters. You can use a lot of these functions in Diffio with non-DAS bodies. So I really recommend you get this out on. So if I want to do um, fix the clothing first, let's do that before we attach the soft body physics to it. You can see that the clothing wraps in really ugly in the front. Now, to fix this in DAS, they use what's called a smoothing modifier. If I were to select the clothes, go into mesh smoothing, a lot of clothing items come with a smoothing modifier already applied on it. If I come in here and I said 10, or say 20 actually, 20 would look better. You can see that that solves the issue here. However, um, DAS doesn't let you doesn't let you uh, export this by default. So what do you do? What do you do if you want to export this? Let me set it to 30. Uh, 20 looks about the same. So if you don't want to sculpt your body and try to fix it manually that way, what you can do is you can just hide the main character. Make sure only that's showing. It'll remember the character's body underneath and just show you it with the smoothing modifier. And then you can just select the outfit, go to resolution, hit base, then hit export. Export is OBJ. I already did it here, you can see. Say yes. Export at 1% scale. And there you go. Now when I hop in here, if I hide everything and then import legacy, choose that. Make sure that you got these two settings on. You see I have the new outfit with the middle smooth. If you go into object mode, or not object mode, slash uh, edit mode, make sure there's nothing else attached here. If the character's body is attached to the, the mesh, like we got all the Genesis 8 parts on it, just delete them just by selecting the two materials and then control I. So if you select, select, and then control I, if there's anything there, it would select it. But in this case, it came out pretty good. So all you got to do now is unhide everything, uh, select the smoothed item, apply transforms, very important, and then select the original outfit that you want to copy this to. So in my case, it would be this cutout front dress. So yeah, let me apply transforms, and then control click, select the original. And then I could just say, um, showing us shapes and I have a quick menu for that but if you can't find it it's right here it's in uh, this one yeah there you go join us shapes so I'm just going to delete the new one and select the original and apply that shape key you can see the smooth mesh there you go and you could delete the base there you go that works for me and that's about it and now if you want this to uh be attached, like move with it, you can see the shirt's not moving at all. It's very simple. You just make sure your character is in her zero pose, put her in the rest position. If you're using a Daz IK, you can see that the legs change in the rest and pose. So it's pretty important you select rest position. Or you make like a, uh, you know, a little pie menu. I got pie menu so I can say, you know, pose, rest, whatever. Uh, for that, I use the add-on pie menu maker. It's really good. 
make pi menus without having to code or anything. So to copy these over, you select the mesh and then shift select the body. So the, bo the main body has to come last, that's super important. And if you had any uh, morphs, like corrective morphs, for example, uh, JCM, Splexion, Spaces, things like that, you would want to come in here and transfer your shape keys. I didn't, uh, where is it? Transfer, transfer shape keys. Somewhere in here, I don't, I don't see it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know where they move that. Um, maybe it's in, maybe if I hit Q, I've got transfer shape keys. Um, let's say, oh, I know why it's not showing it, because there is no sh fucking shape keys to transfer. It's right there. It's great. <laughs> if you had shape keys on your body, it would show it there, and you could transfer it. But for my case, it's grayed out, because I didn't import any. That's fine. I'm not setting her up to be fully animated and shit. So it was just for a little demonstration. But yeah, if you wanted to import some, like select the main body, you can then say uh, standard morphs. I'm just going to import her JCMs real quick. And done. Give that a second. It does take quite a while, and that's part of the reason I didn't do that. But now she has a bunch of JCMs on her, and then if I select the mesh, it has none. However, if I go in here and I hit transfer shape key, I can copy these to the outfit. There we go. And now she has all of those on it. If I were to come in here and move it, you can see her JCM sort of shoulder working. Now if you want to copy it so that all of this works with it, the physics and all that, um, again, just make sure she's in the rest position. And then select the outfit first, ship select the body last, go into advanced setup, go into mesh. There's an option here called transfer vertex groups. Click that. Threshold, I usually just leave it default. Now, if it's too far from the body, then make it lower. If it's too close to the body and clipping, make it higher. And there you go. So now when I hit play, it should move with it. Oh, she lost her animation. Uh, let me select this. Go into that. Let's make a quick one for her real quick. Oh, wait, wait. I forgot. Um, you got to also copy the modifier. So select the outfit and then shift select the body. Press Control L and copy modifiers. Now, when you select the outfit and you go into your modifiers, you're going to see a bunch of these that say vertices change. All you got to do is click unbind and then bind. Unbind, bind, and anything else that says unbind, click it and rebind it. It's kind of like hair when you transfer hair from one character to another, you have to reattach it. Now when you hit space, it'll move with it. Now if I want to test that, let me just grab this, hop into pose mode, and hit spacebar over about, let me put her in pose position. We got it from the front, go back here. You can see it gets all screwed up. You just come down to the add-on and hit delete all bakes and bake all and that should fix it. There you go. Now it works with the clothing and looks as it should. Everything's great. Now what about the uh, torso? Like, you know, you want butt physics and shit. Um, that's a little bit trickier, but I'll show you how to do it anyway. So if I select the body, some people do this. They will select the vertex group uh, pelvis and then they'll go down here and they'll say uh, close mesh yeah close mesh convex hole and then create cage and that can work that can work for the most part um, some you also want to select the cage and change this to pelvis volume and that'll look pretty decent um, make sure to copy your vertex groups and your modifiers of course I'm just gonna hide the outfit for now that way we can just observe and you can see that looks pretty all right however it doesn't move that much and it deforms the leg see that that doesn't look very good so how do you make this proper well you you would want a mesh that actually has vertex groups for the butt cheeks but this mesh does not so I'm just gonna remove the pelvis and I'm gonna hide the skeleton 
first put in rest position, then you can hide it. And then come in here and let's just make some weights for it. It's a little bit annoying, but you know, if you want it to look good, you gotta do what you gotta do. Let's go in here, go into vertex groups. I'm going to delete the pelvis spine. And then I'm gonna hit new. I'm gonna create a new one, I'm gonna call this butt. <laughs> now I'm gonna go in here, make sure my weight is at one. And my strength, I'm gonna put a Oh, well, let's see what that looks like at halfway. No, that doesn't look very good. So put your strength at one. And then come in here and draw from the side. If, to draw weights, you can paint. If you want to draw them smoothly with a gradient, you hold the Alt key. And then you draw in a direction. You can see that if I did this. When I tilt it, it moves. If I hold Control down, it'll snap. This also means you can snap up and down. So what I like to do is I like to move it smoothly to the depth that I want and then straighten it by snapping. So you can see that gradient is way too big. So what can I do about that? Well, if I come closer to the mesh and then draw the gradient, it's much more accurate to the shape. So you want to start as close to the mesh as you possibly can. You know, maybe at an angle, because about you usually do. they're angled upward like that. If you're an anime character, anyway. And that looks pretty good. And what you can do is just come in here, set your weight to zero, and then paint over the whole thing. If you don't want to paint slowly like that, like little by little, you can also use a gradient for this. And just keep click dragging. See that? I didn't mean for this to turn into a weight painting tutorial, but <laughs> it's useful stuff to know. You just drag these down. Again, the closer you start to the mesh, the less likely you'll end up touching a weight you don't mean to. Don't forget the arm. We can see that the angle you choose, if you go like opposite, it deletes down here, and that's not what we want. So I'm just going to keep dragging from here. There we go. There we go. It's looking a lot nicer. Now remember that the uh, pin group is the opposite of red. Red is the part that moves. Usually when you do vertex groups for pinning simulations, you paint red what you don't want to move, but the add-on takes your existing vertex group. So you want, you want to make sure that what you want to move is the part that has the weight influence, which is the red part. So I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to start deleting some of this. And the reason we're not going to do it as one, if you do it as one like this, it'll look pretty decent. But again, if you want more control and you want to be able to have more movement and range and all that, you want to do a cage for each one. Do them separately. So I'm just going to keep working on this gradient. Just push it down, push it in, whatever i got to do. Something like that looks pretty good. And then from the top part, try to smooth this out. You can see the uh, gradient tool makes this a lot, lot easier. If I come down here to the end. Something like that. Something like that. That looks pretty great so far. And it usually helps to come in here and blur the weights when you're done. That way they're not too extreme. And then the top you can also straighten it out too and then the um, middle part you want to come in here set your weight to zero and then you want to try to remove this from any parts of the left side of the mesh as best you can now it doesn't hurt to have it on the left side if it's a little like there's just a little bit on the left side it ain't gonna it ain't gonna screw it up too bad make sure I'm actually on the weight brush I was on board <laughs> But yeah, this ain't going to break anything too bad, but if you want it to be perfect, get in here and just draw from the angle, kind of like this angle that I'm looking at. Usually that works pretty good. And you can look inside the mesh, zoom in, you can see there's still some on it. So if I go in here and I try to remove this, it could be a little bit tricky because it removes it from that side too, and you don't want that. So I'm going to get in here and I'm going to blur this. You can see it's blurring that side. That's because these two are intersecting with each other. 
that's where it gets tricky. So if you have cheeks that are close together like that, you can see this one is clipping right through, right there. Go into edit mode, you can see if I select all, you can see the overlap. So what you can do to fix this is look at the opposite end and then remove the weight from that end. And you can see that's pretty accurate. Now if I look at this end, you don't want to draw here and remove the weight. You want to, you know, it's best you can anyway. If I were to bring that back, actually I think it's clipping the other side around. Let's draw from there. Yeah, you can see when I draw here, it doesn't actually draw at all. But if I flip around and then draw here, see how it removes it from there. So really it's it can be confusing, but try not to make meshes that intersect like that. Maybe use a smoothing modifier like we did with the clothes. Maybe throw that on your Daz body. That could help too. And then you could remove the smoothing from the face and stuff like that. Um, all you gotta do is, if you use a smoothing modifier on a Daz mesh in sculpt mode, select the parts that you don't want it on like mask it out and then go up here in edit mode when it's a morph target you just say vertex blend from shape and then there's an add i don't have any selected so that's going to show up but same instructions as my older uh, morph videos for vertimate so when all that's done you're in weight paint mode and you got one cheek done to mirror these it's kind of retarded there's no way to just directly mirror in blender but what you can do is you can go in here, call this whatever you want, I'm going to call it butt. And then if I go in here and I say copy vertex group, copy actually means duplicate, which I don't fucking understand, but there you go. So then I can select the copy and then mirror it after. But you can see that mirror didn't come out very good, did it? So if I select the original, I'm going to call this butt. L and this is but R. So if I select this last one, I'm going to hit mirror topology. There we go. So when you mirror, if it doesn't come out very good, um, that's because your mesh isn't symmetrical in the way that Blender expects. I don't understand the difference fully myself. I just know if you create a mesh in Blender, usually the mirror works. But when you import a mesh from a different software like Daz, the mirror usually ends up failing. It's kind of like why on um, on edit mode, if you look at like faces, like say if I come in here and I select the cornea and I were to deselect this side, when I use X mirror, it allows me to move these symmetrically. But if I come in here and I selected some faces on the actual body, and I move these symmetrically, sometimes that doesn't work with modes like, say, the, um, what do you call this? Or the uh, proportional editing. You can see that when I pull these out, some parts are moving more than others. Some faces get dragged out. Like if I said the eyelid here and I move this, let's make this tiny. You can see it's moving a little bit more on one side than the other. Some of these faces aren't getting mirrored properly. So what can you do to fix that? You can see on the right it's wide, on the left it's very small. Even though I grabbed, I use mirror, it should be working, it doesn't. So if this frustrates you too, all you gotta do is come up here and then say, um, I think it's in your tool, let me check. I made a hotkey for this a long time ago, so I don't actually remember where you activate that. Topology mirror. You turn this on, and now it mirrors perfectly. If I set topology mirror off, let me just turn that off. You can see one side is uneven. So make sure that's on when you're doing um, anything related to symmetry. So whether it's weight painting, editing, whatever, topology mirror is what you want to be using. And now, uh, for the final part, <laughs> I know that went on way too long, but I did I didn't want you guys to have a firm understanding of uh, DAS topology and Blender, because it could, it could be very frustrating when things aren't working and it's not super clear why. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to choose Simpa Cage. Where is it? <laughs> Got too many add-ons. 
there we go, that's right here. So now I could just say but R or but L. I'm gonna choose but R. I'm gonna hit uh, fill hole, because I don't want it to, it's not wrapping around the whole mesh. I want it to just be like a boogie, basically. And then I'm gonna change this to press. Now if you get an error when you change presets, that's because you have to do it afterwards. So I'm gonna say create cage, and there we go. But you can see that didn't come out very clean, did it? I came out super bad. So what can we do to make this better? Well, if I go into my weights and I look at my butt R and my butt L, I might want to expand these, make them make them larger. But that's not always the the right the right option. Sometimes you could just change change the settings here and you'll be good. So you can see this option that says smooth selection, clean selection, and remesh. Um, if I were to create a cage, oh, you get an error. Clean selection sometimes needed. So if I come back in here, select this. I do have butt R, okay. Create cage. You're going to see it's all sparse, not, not correct. So if I come up here and I set uh, close cage and turn off clean selection, then create that might work better so it's really up to how it was made um, as you saw the DAS topology it worked pretty much perfect when I did clean selection and close mesh but in this case you don't want any closing of the mesh at all I mean, clean selection without the closed cage it could fail or could be an error so usually if you have to turn this guy off you also want to turn this guy off but there you go and I just say but L and then create one over there, create cage, and there we go. You can see this uh, resolution came out different and one side came out nicer than the other. So how do you go about fixing this? There's, there's a couple ways. If I hit space and then play it, you can see them explode. See that? So these aren't even meshes I want to be using, really. These didn't come out all that good anyways. So I'm just going to delete these. If I come up here, there's a close cage mesh option and change this to convex hole. Create cage. That came out a little bit nicer. Say but R. See if that works out. Then hit space. That worked perfect. So, again, you, you don't always have to go back and remake meshes, flip meshes, things like that. Sometimes it's just the settings that you're using. Um, it's important to understand that the fill hole is better for cleaner, like non-wrapping meshes, like breasts, things like that. Convex hole is more if you have something that was lazily painted or maybe like a big volume, like a hip, a pelvis, stuff like that. But that worked great. So if I now want to copy those modifiers over to the new mesh, it can be a little bit tricky um, now that we already have modifiers on it. But since you already have the binds and everything set up, what you can do is you could just go in here and delete everything. I know that sounds crazy, but just do it. So delete all the modifiers in the clothing, select the main mesh, come in here, copy modifiers, and then select the main mesh and then the body and maybe make a hotkey for this. If you don't have a hotkey for it and you already did it at least once, uh, you can hit F3 and type transfer vertex groups and it should show up there. It doesn't for me. So I'm gonna have to manually go into this, go into advanced setup and transfer vertex groups. Turn the clothing first, the body is last. Then say okay. Now when I play, everything should be good. Let me first bake the physics. If you don't bake them, uh, when you move parts of your mesh or change properties, it, it'll like drag. It'll do this weird stretching thing. Um, this is because in Blender, whenever you do a physics sim, it needs to know where the beginning and the end is. And if you move something without keying it, it can create issues. So just hit the delete all bake and then bake all, and then play and it should work great. As you can see there, it's not working as nice as I would like it. If I hide the clothing and then replay it, you can see a little bit of movement, but it's super, super tiny. So what can I do to make this better? 
I can select each one of these go in here to presets and then change them. So I'm just going to change this to Grass Black Widow. That's like the extra jiggly one. Come down here, delete all and bake all. And then look at it again. You can see that moves a lot more. And if I were to unhide the clothing, you can see it works with that too. There's a little bit of clipping going on. You could always use a smoothing modifier or something. If I select this, it could be that I need to bind these. So anything that says unbind, just click bind. Unbind, bind, unbind, bind. Unbind, bind. Should have a lot of these. Because we created four groups. The more groups you have, the more of these you're going to have. And now when I delete all and then bake all, it should look perfect. There we go. So that's about it. I mean... It's pretty easy, but you can see it clips with the um, <laughs> with the chest area. That's not looking so good, is it? You can see one side's moving, one side isn't. Some of it's right, some of it's not. If I were to look at this without uh, UI off, you can see it's clipping, clipping. This part's moving with it, that part's not moving with it. So what can we do about that? How can we make that better? Well, if I select outfit and I hide that, go back to play, you can see these are moving pretty symmetrically because she's just going up and down. She's not really going left and right much. So what we can do is we can select the armature, go to the beginning, and then unhide all, go down here, delete, rebake it. Sometimes rebaking can fix stuff like that. Go back, still an issue. Delete all, bake, rebake. Still an issue. So I'm going to select this cage. I'm going to switch this to press. I'm going to select this cage, I'm going to switch that to press. Then I'm going to hit delete all bakes and bake all. And then go back to the beginning. Delete all, bake all. And you can see they're still screwed up. What's going on here? Well, this could do with the vertex groups. Could do with the skinning. If I were to go into my modifiers and delete all of them, you can see that it was one of them. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the body or not select by select the clothing, then the body, and then copy modifiers. And then this is in the rest pose, so this is where I want to do it from. Uh, the last time I did this, it could be that she wasn't in a rest pose, but it could also be that the uh, vertex groups need to be transferred before you copy the modifiers. So I'm going to unbind and bind these. Oh, fuck, my bad. <laughs> did that to the body mesh. I don't want to be doing that. I want to only... Er, this part, don't touch. This part... Like the uh, clothing, those are the ones you want to unbind from and then bind. Anything that shows you the vertices has changed. That's what you do. And now everything should work perfectly after I bake. So let me just scroll down. That all looks good. Let's go down, delete all, bake, and bake all. And now everything looks good. So I know that's a lot of steps, but you know that's how you do it. There's no proper jiggle deformer in Blender. Sadly, Maya has the edge on that, but this is how you can do it. It's high performance. You can see that she has modifiers on her. And she's high poly, and everything plays perfectly fine. But if you want to do a proper soft body simulation in Blender without using a convex hole, it's it's a total mess. Like you're gonna get two FPS. It's gonna take forever. It's just not worth it. So this is how you set all that up. I hope this is helpful and it helps you make better animations. Um, and, you know, if somebody does like a written tutorial, maybe somebody can write some instructions <laughs> for this add-on. <laughs> but yeah, it's pretty simple. I, I know it's a little bit confusing at first, but now that you understand what goes where and what can cause what issues, this, this should be a lot simpler to use and more fun to animate with. Anyway... Uh, suck at ending videos. There's more I want to expand on, but I'll save that for a different video. Um, maybe go over uh, adding it to soft body objects, like grabbing objects, squishy stuff, you know. Um, well, until the next time, I hope that helped you.